Some people would say the problem isn't really animal agriculture, but actually human overpopulation. In 1812, there are 1 billion people on the planet. In 1912, there are 1.5 billion. Then, just 100 years later, our population exploded to 7 billion humans. This number is rightly given a great deal of attention, but an even more important figure when determining world population is the world's 70 billion farm animals humans raise. The human population drinks 5.2 billion gallons of water every day and eats 21 billion pounds of food. But just the world's 1.5 billion cows alone drink 45 billion gallons of water every day and eat 135 billion pounds of food. This isn't so much a human population issue, it's a human eating animals population issue. Environmental organizations not addressing this is like health organizations trying to stop lung cancer without addressing cigarette smoking. But instead of secondhand smoking, it's secondhand eating, which affects the entire planet. We have roughly a billion people starving every single day. Worldwide, 50% of the grain and legumes that we're growing we're feeding to animals. So they're eating huge amounts of grain and legumes. And in the United States, it's more like closer to 70, 80, depending on which grain it is, 90, about 90 percent of the soybeans. 82 percent of the world's starving children live in countries where food is fed to animals in the livestock systems that are then killed and eaten by more well-off individuals in developed countries, such as the U.S., U.K., and in Europe. The fact of it is that we could feed every human being on the planet today an adequate diet if we did no more than take the the feed that we are feeding to animals and actually turn it into food for humans. And so somebody trying to justify GMOs, uh, that's like trying to give a drowning man a drink of water. You can produce, on average, 15 times more protein from plant-based sources than from meat on any given area of land, whether it's a uh, using the same type of land, whether it's a very fertile area in one area of the world or it's an area that's depleted. If we would reduce the amount of meat we're eating and dairy and eggs, we could allow all these monocropped fields of genetically engineered corn and soybeans to revert back to forest again, to be habitat for animals. You know, anytime somebody tells you that we can't grow food for humans on the land that we're growing feed for animals, uh, this is somebody that if smoking the number one crop out of California. The, the fact of it is, if you can grow corn to stuff down the throat of an animal, you can actually grow corn and feed it to a human.